we need to go back to our simple box form drawing in order to map out our shadows. So remember now, our light source, our only light source, is this pendant light hanging from the ceiling. We're not going to use the window this time because if we did, most everything in the room would be backlit we wouldn't be able to see the forms very well. So we're going to use that light. Now remember, as you remember on our floor plan, the center of our light is one, would, the central ray of the light would hit one box in down the center of our drawing. So that's going to give us the shapes of the shadows on the floor. What will give us the shapes of the shadows that are above eye level will be the center point of the light source itself. So we'll make an X here on the underside of the light. And even if your light source takes a, a completely different shape or it has uh, many little lights within it, you use one beam of light. You think of it as one ray of light. This is lighting up this whole area in front of the sofa. So we're going to have the the sofa is going to interrupt the light, but this is how you figure out how it will do so. So this now interrupts the light, the rays of light. So we have shadow now, we know, on the side of, beside the sofa, on either side. Now, traditionally, what we would do is use this point, the light source itself, to figure out how long that shadow should be. And we're first of all looking for how long the length of the shadow for this line would be. If we do that though, and we go through the topmost point of that arm, we get one colossally long shadow. It would be out this far. And that would give our whole picture, our whole room in shadow. So instead of that, we're going to choose a modest shadow. That would just mean that the light is a little bit higher than we're saying it is. Now, we need to know where the vanishing point for the whole room is because you recall the shadows take on the shape of the things that are casting them, the cast shadow. So I use that vanishing point to draw that arm. I need to use it to draw the shadow for the arm. Now the shadow is interrupted by the wall. So I know that I have to just go straight up the wall. And it's complicated. It, it has the shadow for the arm, then the shadow for the back, but we're going to simplify it and just take a point from the back of the sofa and the light source itself this time. Because remember, when we want to find the shape of the light for things that are above the floor, we're going to consult the center of the light source itself. So we're going to just take a point for the back of the sofa and project from there, and that will cut off our line at this point. So that's how tall our shadow is going to be. And in fact, we can even keep that shape. That shape would be just fine. And you're going to go back and put in some cross hatching. Now your draperies are going to take on a shape. So, and you, for your hatching, you're going to use your ruler so that they're nice and clean. And get into the habit when you're hatching to start from the other direction, not this one, because you don't want to be, if you're using your ink pen, which you will be doing, you don't want to be backtracking over your lines because they will smear, especially on marker paper, they will smear. We went out one and a half, so I know where this will be. And I'm trying to keep out of the way here, so uh, I'm hoping that I'm getting all of this straight, but if I, I'm not, you'll know to do so yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go up the wall again. It's a nice thing about symmetry, you don't have to worry too much about too much. So, again I'll take the, the side of the back of the sofa and I'll find the angle here. And that will be just fine. And I'll be able to fill in my shadows. And you'll use your ruler. I'm going to go a little fast here for the recording so I don't waste too much time. Now on the sofa itself, there will be shadow, of course, underneath. There's always shadow under. So, 
and this is nice on a floor plan as well because you can go a little darker all the way around an object and of course your feet are on the floor so they're going to cast a bit of a shadow too so we've got a, a feel for the width of her foot and we can put some hatching in for that as well and herself the light is from above and its beams are radiating back so I'm going to put I'm looking for undersides now so side planes now there really isn't a side in shadow but I want to add a little bit of depth for her so I can put a little bit of an underplane over her leg that I round it out because her leg is round and that helps to set her up a little bit even though I know there isn't a lot of shadow over there that will help to set her up a little bit and she would cast a shadow on my box now this is just a box so I have to put it rather straight but she isn't straight but the box itself is straight if it were a cushion I would round it out but it's not so I'm just going to make it straight you'll know too if you have a seated figure to make it straight okay so that helps to set her up and I suppose we could put some shadow back in here but it's probably better to just leave that and do that when you render with your markers the wall itself has what is called a penumbra so you make a nice little arc here and a little arc here and if you look around the room that you're sitting in you'll see that in these corners in fact they they're darker than any other part of the wall and the light is going to sing and wash this wall so you just have to go into these corners and put a little bit of hatching and very soon give it up don't go too far just keep them close in the corner and then as you move your way into the room you give them up but you do have a nice slender line this is your thinnest thinnest pen maybe your thinnest thinnest pigment liner that you use for drafting you would use that in this case very thin and just to give a little just to knock back these corners a bit and you do the same and they look so much better when they're perfectly straight and done with your set square or your ruler now I'm looking at that corner of that shelf you see this all the time that's the great thing about all of this perspective you can see it around you you just have to look so now this shadow is in perspective so I'm using my vanishing point because it's that it's the shadow for that and I want to see that so now I just go in and now you could argue that this whole panel is in shadow because it's not it's oblique to the light and, and hidden from the light really so you could in fact but this is good training to be conscious of the effect of this itself the light source and how it's influencing now this one is above eye level slightly so we're going to see it go up rather than go down now this one it's right across from it almost but we know that this is going that's going to cast some sort of shadow so I just make it you'll notice they're getting shallower as we go up so I just make this uh, I do the same I have to do the same because otherwise it well I can use my vanishing point at the bottom but this angle I just made that up because I just know that this has to be in shadow if I go by this it's going to bring a little bit of shadow inside here and at the top it's going to bring a little bit of shadow right here so I've got shadow in here this now this light is right all through this front right all through here all through the front but this piece interrupts the light that's why I have shadow there and I have shadow here as well this whole panel though 
is in shadow. So I can go in and, and fill that in because it's definitely oblique to the light. It's, and it will make, make a nice contrast as well for the panel that's facing us. So I can go in there. If, if I did have more room to draw out here, I would see that it does in fact cast a little bit of shadow here. So this in fact is a shadow plane. So I can go in and make this plane shadow. So having that little dot now, I'm really getting crooked here. Hopefully everybody can, my big fat head. So you can see, and that helps to set it up quite nicely. Whereas this one is, is actually in the light. I can see it doesn't interrupt until here. Floor as well at the back. It can be a little shadowy, so you can put a little careful cross-hatching back here too. 